Well, actually, there is this shift stuff, sorry, that I see divinity in people but can't see here inside me. And I would love to be ready myself, which means for me to be brave and honest and I can't, can't, can't do it. I feel solar plexus. Yes, I feel this love so much. Thank you. So yeah, so yeah, that is solar plexus and that is the heart that is rejecting you in some way, saying there's something wrong with your personality structure, but that's within the personality structure. So within the, you take too much responsibility in yourself. But let's look at the fundamentals of what it is to be a personality structure. Our thinking is designed to find problem, to uh, go into situations and find the problem and think, fix it. So if you watch the Jungle Book, like Mowgli, like um, in the Jungle Book at first, they see his thinking mind as something that's evil because it creates all these things which are harmful to the animals and they don't allow him to think. Um, and eventually he begins to, he leaves the wolf pack, he gets chucked out or something, I forget the story. And then um, he begins to use his mind. He first of all, I think, uses his mind to help Mowgli, the bear, I think that's his name, Mowgli the bear, by um, helping him invent a way to get honey from the bees. And then another time he uses his mind to tie reeds together to make a rope to pull a baby elephant out of a hole. Um, and he begins to use his mind and he begins to see power in it. So notice what he's doing. He goes into the situation, he finds the problem. The problem is the bear can't get the bees. So then he devises a solution for that problem. The same with the elephant. And this is what our thinking mind does. When we begin to think about ourselves and the other, guess what we do and our life, we always find the problem in it of what can be better. And it's not, it's not that there's something wrong with you for doing that. And some people are different. Some people do it more to themselves. Some people do it more to the external. Um, some people do it to their job or their children, whatever it is. Um, and then you seek to find solutions for it. So that is the nature of the mind. The mind's nature is to find problems in whatever it's pre presented by. So of course, like, okay, so you've accepted the outside world, but inside yourself, of course you find problems inside yourself when you think about yourself. And, when you, and you think about yourself a lot because that's what we've been conditioned to do, to constantly be thinking about, are you happy? Um, what you need to do, where you need to be, what your job is, who you need to marry you need to be successful. And then it finds all the problems with it and it gets into this neurotic thinking about it. And that will be the heart and the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the part that says, I can't find love for myself. Like it sees that it can't find love for the self and, and it doesn't know how to change it. And then the heart is the place where it's saying to you that there's something wrong with you, that there's something that you need to change, which is untrue. So, just in that realization that the mind is set up to fix problems, just see how it's deviated on that and made you a problem. And, um, and just notice it, just notice when it's doing it, just notice that it doesn't bring you pleasure, just notice that it doesn't fix your life, don't buy into it, don't buy into those dynamics that it plays, just see it, just watch it, you'll have picked it up from your parents, from society. But the true freedom isn't that. That is something that happens in this body-mind. The, the true freedom is the recognition of what is experiencing that. But that is endless. So once it's got off fixing that, then it will want a job to fix. Like, so that's another thing that you can do is put your mind to an activity. Um, like train your mind to be more focused on things to stop that happening. Train your mind to... to to put it in the I am or train your mind to, um, when it begins to be negative about itself, to um, do carpentry or whatever. Like just to, it's a habit that you've got to get out of and realizing it, recognizing it, not denying it in the body, not trying to tell yourself new stories, just recognize it all, recognize what's happening. And know when I say train your mind to do that, know that I don't mean there's any doership there that because you can't train your mind because you don't exist. But what I'm saying there is just like somebody can teach you how to cook and it's a happening, it's not 
it's they're giving information and you think it's information to you and you're learning it they're training the body how to cook and training your body how to be more kind to itself or how to be more successful but it's nobody's doing it's a functioning that happens just like i train siri in my phone to um to uh um what do i train him to do to be more um to to find my preferences quicker to to understand what i like what i don't what i want he evolves and he evolves to that and that's what the human being does we then say i'm doing that i'm training my mind i'm putting my attention in the i am i'm doing the woodwork to better myself but that i isn't who you are it's something that's being watched by who you are and it's a happening it's a functioning playing out who you are is this consciousness that's still and empty and present and never affected by anything it's here all the time in every moment, free, alive, expansive. It's not separate from everything. And that's the true freedom. And that's not intellectual. That's known beyond the intellect. Who watches this you that doesn't love itself? Thank you, Natalie.